So just give us your take of what you're expecting, what your takeaway is from the event in Shanghai today, and perhaps some of the consumer trends that you're seeing out there. Well, um, it's great, especially, you know, right after COVID, we'll be able to host another big event in China and really see the 5G adoption speeding up in this event. And if you look at, you know, XR is definitely a huge part of that in, in terms of 5G adoption. And um, that's what people have been talking about right now. If you look at Samsung or Apple, they're all doing something internally and people are getting excited. And talking about Unreal, we're the first company that does mixed reality and make that, you know, available for the actual customers. And we've already been launching in uh, South Korea and Japan last year. And after a successful story in Japan and in, uh, in Japan and South Korea, we decided to just expand that and do that in Europe and the U.S. this year. So tell us a little bit of what's needed to make your products successful, because, of course, you do need Internet connection. And right now we know that the speed and quality of 5G, for example, still can't really support AR and VR. How long will it take for you to have an environment where you can be fully supported? Well, that's a great question. It's, a, it's supported now because, you know, to leverage the, uh, by connecting our glasses to the cell phone, you can leverage their compute and the battery. And in the meantime, you have the 5G access from the cell phone. And we, you know, we provide the Nebula, which is our system. You can reproject all the content from your cell phone in front of your eyes. And this way, immediately, you have a brand new kind of experience in the AR glasses. And on top of that, we will create an AR platform where you can really project or create some of the 3D content in front of glasses as well. So is the company profitable? Uh, and if you say that the 5G environment supports that use, then, uh, you know, what are you seeing in terms of profitability for use cases? Well, that's a great question. Um, so we have some very interesting results coming from South Korea, where we only launched uh, like four months. And we do realize people use that to, to have some updated, up, upgraded experience on top of your cell phone. For example, you know, on your cell phone, the screen is not getting any bigger. But if you watch a YouTube, watch a movie, or play some games, you can easily replace your cell phone screen you know, uh, with the, the AR glasses. And we realize that, you know, the average use time in South Korea is near one hour, it's about 15 minutes. That means people actually use that on a daily basis to replace some of the activity they've done on a cell phone. And that's a very encouraging trend that we see from the customer behavior in, in Asia. And we decided to do more and expand that. And keep in mind that this is only the first generation. This is a brand new product. And we don't do a lot of broadcasting offline because of COVID but we already generate enough interest and the buzz in the Asian market. So um, very, very, you know, very, very um, interesting and uh, looking forward to more kind of uh, growth in future. Shu, what are the killer apps that you, you envision for this technology, right? What is going to be, you know, the applications that really prove the core fundamental value of the tech? Well, okay, um, so if we had a cell phone, you know, um, that's, you know, we, it's a mass in our daily life, right? That's kind of the ultimate terminal to our life, but you do realize there are some limitations to that. As we mentioned, the screen is not getting any bigger. We're kind of uh, limited to this, you know, rectangle in front of you. But imagine the world, the reality is all 3D. So we want to make people more powerful. By wearing glasses, you know, all day, you have uh, uh, AI behind that that can help you uh, that can refine the information, that can have the AI help you process a lot of stuff. If you look at the um, Iron Man movie that people have been watching, you know, um, when you put on a suit, you feel like you are invincible. And we want to do something <laughs> like that. It, I, I think, you know, it, the, the, it's actually going to be a lot sooner than people expect it. Yeah, that's an awesome idea. I would definitely want to try that suit for Iron Man. Um, Let's talk a little bit about the competitive landscape because we have seen Facebook now promising their own AR glasses this year. Apple also refocusing their efforts there. Uh, how are you planning to maintain a competitive edge here against these giants? Well, I think, you know, to be honest, you know, there's only one rule, just making better products and keep the innovation. 
right? So um, even we're a startup, we're the first company who connect the cell phone with the glasses. So we, 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 brand, uh, we create a brand new product type that customer really like. And we learn a lot of from that. You know, there's a lot of interesting feedback come out of that and we'll keep improving. For example, for MWC this year, you know, we do realize that Unreal Light is purely designed for, for customers, for the consumers. But we do have a lot of other uh, requests coming from the enterprise usage, like medical, education, or um, you know, productivity. Those kind of people would like to wear the glasses for a much longer time. So they don't mind you know, have a slightly bigger form factor. So that's why we'll unleash our you know, Unreal Light um, Enterprise Edition making sure you know, we can cover not only the, the entertainment and gaming, but also productivity and some other professional use cases. So where do you see as the biggest geographic market for you? Is it still within China? Do you have more global ambitions? Oh, I'm sorry, can you say that again? Where, what, what are your global ambitions? Are you very much still focused on the Chinese market or beyond? Um, it, it's, it's definitely beyond, and um, I, in my opinion, I think, you know, this is just the beginning of a new decade. And if you look at, you know, uh, 4G, um, without 4G, we won't have TikTok, we won't have Netflix, or, you know, to be this popular and dominant. And we really believe, you know, for 5G, we, we need some new use cases, you know, that we can really leverage the bandwidth, those kind of stuff. And that's how AR can really play into part. And that's how can really play into our... Um, a huge part of our daily life in, in five to ten years.